Hello everyone, uh, my name is Austin Belzer uh, from Austin B Media, and today I've got the writer and director of Millstone, a, uh, a th short thriller of, of sorts. It's a, it's about a um, it's about a husband and wife. I won't reveal too much because I feel like that's the whole point of the short is finding out what's going on. Um, I'll, I'll just say that, and it's uh, playing at Slam Dance. I think it's premiering uh, at Slam Dance, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's got um, Daniel Durant, who um, with uh, Coda, he was recently on uh, Dancing with the Stars. Uh, like we said in the email chain, uh, Peter, we're super bummed he didn't win. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, Peter, welcome. welcome. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of what I'd assume would be a busy schedule um, to go hang, hang out and have this interview with me. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, I've, I, I have been keeping busy, but it's but it's great to, to chat with you. And, and uh, I'm always, always eager to talk about, frankly, film in general, but especially about my film. But uh, but I just I just love talking film. Well, I'll try to keep it related to your your film. I'm not going to be talking about, um, oh, the Oscars or anything. I'm not going to be talking about the Critics Choice, any any of that. Um, that's what the other what the actual articles are for. Um, uh -huh. But um, but I did get to watch this this morning and um, came up with a few questions um, and a few. Um, I, I just kind of want to know what, what what was the genesis of the idea for Mill, Millstone? Yeah, so Millstone, as, as you said, um, don't want to give too much away, but it's it's about a, a married couple, sort of in a, a grieving couple, I would say, who seek out a therapist. And where the therapy goes is uh, sort of unexpected twists and turns in there, I would say. But um, but and then the whole film is in American Sign Language, and it's it's uh, deaf deaf characters played by deaf actors. Uh, and so for me, I would say the idea, like the basic story of the film comes from, uh, I, I think as I'm a parent myself, and I, I think um, having lots of, suddenly when you become a parent, it's wonderful, but you also have this whole new uh, category of fears <laughs> that, that you never had before about like, what could happen to my children or what, you know, what, the, you know, bad things happening that you never had to worry about uh, before you were a parent yourself. And that's something that I think adjusting to that experience for me, um, I wanted to sort of take my, my deep fears and put them on the screen and then sort of a uh, little catharsis there. Um, but then the film is in sign language and that's, so my son is deaf. And so that's something that's been really interesting uh, going through this journey of sort of figuring out what that means and, and sort of learning about the deaf community and making lots of friends and and uh, learning about uh, deaf culture and sign language. And so it's something that I really wanted to have this film be in sign language, but then not have the story have anything to do with them being deaf, just that we could tell all sorts of different stories in sign language. And that's something that I hope there could be more and more of so that my son can grow up seeing films um with people like him on the screen and, and seeing films in sign language yeah and you know it it's it, it's intriguing because uh, you know there's other film films with deaf representation such as um sound of metal um mm -hmm. riz ahmed's been doing a um a bunch of those um where he plays a deaf uh character because there was another one he did gosh i mogul mowgli i want to say um oh. Or so it's basically sound of metal, but British. Okay. Um, um, anyways, but I I thought that was interesting that it didn't focus on the deaf aspect because it you think um well basically all deaf rep representation well I I don't want to say all but um a lot of it right now is just even Coda was here's a um, here's a movie about deaf representation in, in the world, uh, right? And I guess I want to ask, um, 
so what was the uh, uh, um, most critical aspect of that, you know, because that's kind of what was the most critical aspect of, of representing um, the deaf uh, community? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it was really important to me to have deaf actors. Um, the the um, I mean, the characters, again, it's not about them being deaf. So right. theoretically, they don't have to be deaf. But um, and there are people who grow up, you know, as CODAs or, or people who grow up in families with sign language. Um, but it, it was important to me that they be that the characters be deaf and that they be played by deaf actors. And I think that's a really important part of representation. Um, and I, I also think for me, um, I don't feel like. I have that much to say authentically about what it is to be deaf or the experience of being deaf. My my son will when he's older, um, and I have things to say about being the parent of a deaf child. Like I, that's my experience, but I am not in a position to tell the story of you know what it's like being deaf. Um, and I feel like there's we can only see that story so many times. So, and maybe, maybe every individual can have a great spin on that, but it's not my story. And I think there's a real value in having more and more stories out there where it doesn't always have to be about, you know, the hearing person in a deaf family or hearing people figuring out that there are deaf people in the world, but it's instead just, we're going to have a story about people going through hard times, doing bad things to each other, whatever. And it just happens to be that they're deaf. Yeah. And um, keying back into something you talk, talk about a little bit in the film, I, I don't want to give too much away. So I don't know if this is a spoiler. I'll, future me, I'll cut this out if this is not a spoiler. Uh, but I'll ask it anyway. You, you briefly, I mean, it's a sentence. You briefly touch on the topic of... Uh, vengeance um and something about germany I, I don't have the exact quote in front of me um but how um a bunch of people in germany were seeking vengeance for um something i can't i can't remember exactly what it was um but first i want to know where that came from um and then uh second um I would love to talk about how, how you wanted to broach the topic of grief. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the, the point about the Germany and the vengeance that, that I was actually a German studies major in college. So bringing a little of that into this um, and uh, it, it's just telling a little one of the therapists actually tells a little story about world war two and about how uh, in there was after the German bombing of England and the Battle of Britain and the, and the Blitz, there was English retaliatory bombing of Germany. This is getting into the weeds of history. But but the point in the film is that um, this wasn't always str military strategic purposes. There was also we want to hit back the way that we were hit. Our civilians were hit. We want to hit back their civilians. And th there's an element of that as part of sort of the human experience. And not that that's a good thing, not that that's justifiable, but that that is part of the human experience, that desire to hit back the way that we were hit. Um, and I, maybe it is justifiable in World War II, but I think that kind of impulse is a, is a tricky one, but I think a really important one that I wanted to explore. And, you know, building off that into talking about grief, I, I, um, I haven't had the experiences that happen exactly in the film, but I think that there are uh, going through hard times again as a parent or just as a person going through losing someone or bad things happening. I think I think that's a place where we can be pushed to desperate measures where where, you know, we can be living a good life. We can be doing all sorts of nice things. And then when we are pushed beyond where we ever thought we were, you know, Things have happened to us that we never thought were going to happen. Suddenly, our own actions uh, can take a different turn, and things can become possible that we that we might be inclined to do. And that's that's something that I wanted to explore in this film. Yeah, and I I really do think you do without again without uh, broaching too into the weeds of spoilers. 
Um, and I, I it, it it's interesting because it's it, it it's a subset of grief that I don't think a lot of people talk about is that vengeance side that it's like well this bad thing happened to me so therefore I want to do this out of my anger um which again hasn't really been at all that explored and you know um, that's fantastic and i think um, i think sometimes you know we, we've seen films where you know lots of liam neeson movies or uh jason statham movies where you know someone does something bad and then you know the person who was wronged wants revenge and that's natural you know the, and i think that's one way of exploring it but i think there's also an idea of like when there isn't one person to blame, but you still have that drive for vengeance. <laughs> you, you still want to take your grief and turn it into something. I think that uh, sometimes you're looking for that, uh, that Liam Neeson encounter with somebody that suddenly this will right the world if I can get my revenge. And, uh, and that's tricky when there isn't necessarily one person in that position that you could get vengeance on. So that's, that's part of the exploration too. Yeah, and um, I kind of want to go a little bit back to what we were talking about with representation. I'm curious, I, I know you said um, your son was deaf, so maybe you didn't have to do as much research on this. I just kind of wanted to key in on, did you have to work with the ASL coordinator? Did you have to, um, or did you pick that up yourself? How, how did uh that and um compound question alert but um uh, uh, but um d how did you have to go about shooting those scenes yeah great questions and I, and i think that's really important to talk about but um i i know some sign language i i like to call myself uh my son is 4 and i like to say i'm i'm 4 year old fluent that i can <laughs> communicate with him but uh but I don't know that I can communicate uh, professionally with adults. Um, and uh, and so we we had, and the crew was mixed hearing and deaf and uh, the cast was all deaf. But so we had uh, an ASL interpreter on set. We had ASL interpreters for um, pre-production meetings. Uh, and then with the actors, I worked with them individually a little so that, because it's something when, um, you know, I can look at them as a director, see, you know, am I seeing the person that I want to see? Am I seeing the, you know, the, the emotion there, but also working with um, an ASL, uh, an ASL consultant who could actually help them. Uh, and some of them wanted to work with one and some of them didn't, but, but had that available as an ASL consultant to actually go over their lines with them in sign language, um, just so that, because I'm not the expert in sign language, so I couldn't I couldn't really tell them what to do on that score. So we had a separate ASL consultant to help them with that, um, or that was uh, available to them, and, and some of them used that. Um, but then, in terms of shooting the film, there there are some things that I knew going into it that were really different and important, and some things that I figured out later on. But we wanted it to be really clear that the signing is always on screen, and that this is you. If you are just following the signing, you know, sign language and English are not exactly the same language. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's just like with any foreign language, it, it's not 100% the same thing, what they're signing in the subtitles. But we wanted it to be very clear that you're always seeing the signing. If you are just watching this in sign language, you're going to be able to see all of it. And so that means the kind of shots that you get is going to be limited, the kind of, um, the kind of editing that you do too, because you, when you think about so many movies that we see, someone's talking and we're looking at a reaction shot of the person they're talking to, or we cut away to the to something else in the room. If you need to be seeing the hands of the person who's talking the whole time, you can't do those kinds of cutaways. And so that was something that figured out both on set and then, and then in post-production, which I think gives the film subtly a little bit of a distinctive uh, visual style. You know, it's it, it, it's great that you said the thing about the hands because, so I I've been taking my interview clips this week and putting it uh, or taking clips out of my interviews this week and 
um, and putting them into a short form thing. And the uh, have you seen the uh, Underbug? Uh, it's screening. It's a psychological Indian horror film. Um, mm. One of the guys, Ali Fazal and Hussein Dalal, um, it's these two rioters um, st stuck in one place. Um, and this one guy, I, so you use vertical resolution. So like for, so like this, right? Oh, interesting. Uh, and he was using his hands a lot. So I had to cut out his hands, uh, but you could kind of still see the hand moving in the vertical. So it's like, okay, this is going to be uh, interesting. Um, so yeah, when you said, uh, when you need to see the hands, it gets kind of tricky um, because maybe you, um, like for Zoom, you know, I'm not going to get too nerdy about focal length, lengths <laughs> and stuff like that. But generally, the setup is not, not uh, catered to have hands um, moving out to maybe right here on the borders of the frame that, um, if you're doing vertical. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it, it, it is interesting because... Um, and then going back to what you said, um, both Daniel and, um, I forget the actress's name, um, but Bellamy, they have, yep. below me, um, have two different ways of signing. Daniel, he's, he doesn't just sign, right? He expresses with his face too. So you've got to get both of those, which I found, which I find interesting because everyone does it differently. Like you said, um, so it, it is a unique, unique editing process, I, I, would, I would think. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's not. And, that, uh, and that's something, too, where I think and that's a great that's a great insight, um, because I think the three different characters and this is partially them as people, the way that they sign in their regular life as, as actors, but also I think fitting with the characters, too, that. The therapist has a much more regimented, sort of clean kind of signing. And uh, Daniel and his character, it's its this full body. We're seeing a lot of him. And Bellamy, it's a lot of sort of thrown off signs, not, not super polished, clean looking. But that is another aspect of her character, the way that she's signing. And that's something that I love seeing that visual side of of the of the language that you just don't see if if you're just watching something in english and that's something that i i love that what we were able to capture in this yeah and um i also want to give uh some inside baseball props to slam dance uh all the captions have been baked in to all the screeners uh this year uh, I had not. I have not had, had to enable captions manually. It's all been baked in, so that's been nice. Um, even on yours, uh, the captions are baked in, which is a nice accessibility tool. But yeah, it's like you talk about. There's three three different dis distinct styles of the ASL here, um, and you know, you, you um, below me, she's kind of trail like trailing off, like you said. And I, I, I just found that fascinating. So I wanted to talk a little bit about it. But yeah, um, well, um, I, I, I do hope people see Millstone uh, at Slam Dance. I, I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's virtual, but um, I'll include links to that in the description. Um, I think it's $7 for a ticket. Uh, again, uh, running off the top of my head, but, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, but yeah, I hope people check it out. It, even if it's just one of those things where you're like, I've got 15 minutes, go check out the short. Um, and I, I hope people do. Um, but Peter, I want to thank you so much for your time on this busy pre slam dance nebulous time that, that we're in right now. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Austin. It's been great talking with you, and and I love uh, you're just have a lot of gr great insights into uh, in, into the film. It's very it's very it's very nice to uh, to talk to you. Yeah, no problem. And uh, since you're in Park City, um, well, are you going to be in Park City? I am going to be in Park City. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe you can go across the street and check out a few Sundance films. I know they're competing festivals, but. <laughs> 
you're on the same street so it's all one filmmaking community i think i think it's great to mix mix and match yeah for sure and they both start and end with s and e so that's right that's right um but yeah i i uh i hope people watch your uh, short film and uh have a great slam dance all right thank you thank you so much for your time austin you too (laughs) 